In this video, we'll talk about the creation of a deck of cards inside of a loop as an optimization to our card game program. In the objects page of the Git book is the deck section, which has the starter code for the deck array of card objects. We're going to examine the pattern in this array of objects and how we can create this array inside of a loop rather than literally having to copy and paste all this code. I cloned a new version of the starter code repo and open it inside of VS Code and copied the deck array into my script.js. Let's take a look at what's inside this deck. So we can see that each card object is composed of uh, three keys, rank, suit, and name. And for all 52 cards, uh, this code is about 260 lines long. Um, so this is what it takes to encode, literally encode all 52 cards into this uh, array of objects. What we want to be looking at is how the patterns inside of each object repeat themselves and how we can translate that into a loop that builds that pattern for us rather than writing out each card individually. We can examine the pattern by looking at the fields inside of each object in the deck. So we have three fields, rank, which is a number from one to 13, suit, which is one of four suits, which is hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades, and the name, which is one through 10, and jack, queen, king, and ace. So the question is, for these patterns that are repeating themselves, the numbers one through 13, the suits, the four suits, hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades, and the name, one through 10, and jack, queen, king, ace, how do we express these four separate repeating patterns uh, inside a set of loops. I've taken these comments and put them inside of an empty function that I'm gonna create the deck inside of. So let's talk more about what specific syntax we need. I'm gonna add a comment because I know I need to make 52 cards. So I know I need to make code that repeats itself in some way 52 times. Let's begin with a loop that runs 52 times. Now that I have code that runs 52 times, then I can think about how this code can create the variations that I want for each card. I need to write code that knows which variation to create, and that would be conditional. And it's going to depend on card counter. And the question is, what does my logic need to say in order for it to tell which variation to create? Let's look at some patterns of the kind of uh, variations we need. We said that we're going to use the value of card counter as the condition that tells us which variation to create. So let's talk more about what kinds of variations we need to look for. Basically for rank, and for suit, we're looking to create four different variations. So suit one, and this is a rank from one to 13. And suit two is also a rank from one to 13, etc., etc. Within this rank of 1 to 13, 
then we have a name of 1 to 10 and the special exceptions of jack, queen, king, and ace. So I can tell from this that I need to use card counter to determine that I want to make one of these four variations. And another thing is that I need to somehow encode this one. And I think that this is also another, a different condition that says uh, for certain ranks that I need to have a different name. So then I could say that the condition that I want in the card counter is if the values of 0 or through 52 are um, one of the four divisions, so 1 to 13, or 14 to 26, et cetera, et cetera. So here's some code that begins to differentiate where in the total 52 cards uh, the current card counter is. So detecting uh, what the number range is here. However, this looks like a different pattern to me, which is actually for each one of these sections, I want a rank that starts from 1 and goes to 13. And when I'm on card number 48, I actually don't specifically care that I'm on number 48 card. What that says to me is that there's two separate dimensions of the pattern that's repeating itself. The rank from 1 to 13 and the four suits. And that I can have a loop within a loop that expresses this. My next decision is which loop to put inside of which loop. So I know I need a rank from 1 to 13, and I know that I need a suit from hearts to spades. And the general rule when you're creating a loop within a loop is that if you know that one uh, amount is going to be smaller than the other, then that's the one that goes on the outside. So I'm going to move this around here. So we're going to create a loop for each suit, and then we're going to, inside that loop, create the cards 1 through 13. Another pattern I have here is that suit is not represented by a number, it's a word. So what I actually want is an array of strings of the suits and a loop that visits each suit in the array. Let's do that. Next, I can create the loop that represents the rank of 1 through 13. Now I should have code that runs 52 times. I'm going to add a console log so I can see the current suit as well. I'm going to call my make deck function from the main function so that it will run when I click the submit button. And we should see the console output. Let's save it and see it in the browser. I'm going to click the submit button and watch the loop run. So I can see that the suits are being console logged and the rank is also being console logged. One other thing I want to correct is that I have a rank 0, and I want the rank to start at 1 instead of 0. I can set the number that the rank starts at by setting this rank counter variable 
to one instead of zero. I know my loop runs the proper amount of times. Now I'm going to make my main deck function actually create the deck. The place where I want this to happen is right here because it's a replacement for the hard-coded deck array that I already have. So I'm going to move my function declaration over here and have it replace the deck array. The return value of make deck is going to be the deck that I'm going to use when the game runs. Now my make deck function is being called before it's being created, so I need to move this line to below where I declare my make deck function. Let's begin to define the actual output value of this function. I'm going to start at the top of the function to create my empty array, and I'm going to return it at the bottom of the function. Now inside the loop, I need to be putting each card that I generate into the deck. I'm going to begin inside the loop by creating an object. And then I'm going to put the object inside the deck. Now I need to define what information this individual card has in it. What parts of my code determine uh, what are the different fields um, for this specific card? Right now I have two. One is the current suit. So we saw in the browser that that's uh, set to the correct string. The second one is rank counter, and that's going to go from 1 to 13. So I can use both of these values as fields inside the object that I'm, the card object that I'm creating. So I also know what the field names are going to be, the keys in this object. Those are going to be suit and rank. So the suit is the current suit, and the rank is the rank counter. Let's save this and see it in the browser. Now, when I refresh the browser, I see all of my console logs because my make deck function runs when the page loads. Let's check the global variable that we created that represents the deck array. So if I look inside of this variable, I can see all of my objects and I can see that they look properly formatted. The last thing we need to add to each card object is the name of the card. And I know that the key is going to be called name. I'm going to create a variable for this value. And I know that in the majority of cases, the card name is just going to be a number from 2 to 10. And then I'm going to have some special cases where the card name is not a number. Those cases are 1, 11, 12, and 13. So now I can write some logic that changes the name of the card in these special cases. So if Now I can actually change the name of the card in these specific cases. So if the card is 1, then the name is Ace. If the card is 11, the name is Jack. If the card is 12, the name is Queen. And if the card is 13, the name is King. I've saved my code 
So let's hit the refresh button of the browser and see that the name has been properly added to the deck. If I scroll down, then I should see the name of the card.